what an awesome thing it is to rebel against God. Wow. And my people have forgotten me days without number, God says. Did you tell God you love him today? Did you thank Jesus today for dying for your sins? See, we can go on through life. Well, I know I'm grateful, but Lord, when do I ever tell you? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking the penalty I deserve for dying for me. Thank you, God. I don't, I don't give thanks for the food without saying, Lord, thank you for the health and strength you've given me to partake of it. I'm not worthy of anything. You are so loving and so gracious. We need to give him a little more gratitude, a little more thanks, and a little more reverent awe of who he really is. Father, thank you for your love. Oh, God. When we, like the psalmist, consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Lord, we are nothing. We, we have a sense of self-importance. It's incredible that we ever could. He who thinks himself to be something when he's nothing is, deceives himself. Lord, we need to just bow in full submission to you, not out of fear, out of awesome reverence, but Lord, out of love. You loved us so much. You've given us your son to die for our sins. Lord Jesus, we owe you everything. Father God, we owe you our love, uh, our obedience. Lord, we want to be what you want us to be. And we want to experience the fullness of your purpose for our lives in redeeming us. Help us to win others to Christ. And Lord, use us to your glory to rescue many, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Don't always say what you intend to say, and it's very easy to forget things. Uh, I actually had something in my mind that I was going to say, and I didn't say it this morning, and I was reminded about it. I was talking about <clears throat> so-called biochemical imbalances and psychiatric drugs and so forth, and uh, I should have told you, no matter how bad these things are, and they are bad, uh, Peter Bregan, <clears throat> pardon me, Peter Bregan, whom I quoted, one of the world's leading authorities on this, says that the psychiatric drugs, psychotropic drugs that we give to cure our patients in America, they used the same ones in the Soviet Union to torture their people, okay? Um, but if you are on such drugs, don't get off of them except under a doctor's uh, guidance. You can't just quit. You got yourself hooked on something. The doctor did. But I'm going to read a couple of other statements by Peter Bregan. I'll remind you, because there are an awful lot of people involved in this, I'll remind you uh, of the title of his book, Your Drug May Be Your Problem. Okay? The drug they gave you to cure your problem may be your problem. He's a psychiatrist, one of the world's leading experts on drugs. I'll just give you a couple of other quotes <clears throat> from him. He says... No biochemical imbalances have ever been documented with certainty in association with any psychiatric diagnosis. Shock you? Their existence is pure speculation inspired by those who advocate drugs. There are no known biochemical imbalances and no tests for them, okay? Now, 
he says, what, what happens when we start viewing a human being as an object? We talked about materialism this morning. Well, we're just a bag of molecules, lump, lump of protein molecules wired with nerves and so forth. He says, we lose our own capacity for rationality and for love. It is impossible to reduce a person's emotional suffering to biochemical aberrations without doing something psychologically and morally destructive to that person. We reduce the reality of that individual's life to a narrowly focused speculation about brain chemistry. Thus, in their efforts to be objective and scientific, biological psychiatrists and doctors end up doing very destructive things to people, including themselves. We talked a bit about that uh, this morning. I quoted, I'll quote him again. Remember, this is uh, Francis Crick. You... This is his book, The Astonishing Hypothesis. Why does he call it astonishing? Because it's ridiculous. Uh, common sense would say that's not true. But he says, <clears throat> here's, here's his astonishing hypothesis. You, your joys, your sorrows, your memories, your ambitions, your sense of personal identity and free will are in fact no more than the behavior of a vast assembly of nerve cells and their associated molecules. Okay, the, the famous Francis Crick, co-founder, co-discoverer of DNA and so forth. Um, now, I want to just quote you, I'm going to get off of this, but I want to quote you in, uh, Richard Dawkins again. He acknowledges, quote, now Richard Dawkins, uh, again, one of the world's leading geneticists and evolutionists, wrote The Selfish Gene, big seller. He says, the account of the origin of life that I shall give is necessarily speculative. By definition, nobody was around to see what happened. Well, so what's the point of speculating? It's all meaningless anyway. It's just product of a big bang. He, he then offers bold assertions intermingled with a litany of uncertainty. Typical are the following, I just picked these words and phrases, all on one page, probably, we do not know, must have, perhaps, at some point, formed by accident, may not necessarily, that's in one page. This is the great scientist, and he's going to tell you how life began. He continues, this may seem a very unlikely sort of accident. You're just a bunch of accidents. So it was. It was exceedingly improbable. Let me tell you how improbable it is. Um, Sir Fred Hoyle, mathematician, um, he said, look, you can't have any life without enzymes. Now, what is the what are the mathematical odds that by chance you could get the molecules that are necessary for the enzymes essential for life lined up in the right order by chance? He calculated it on his computer. It's a simple mathematical formula. 10 to the minus 40,000. Now, if you or a long time since you took math, or you, you don't understand that. Let me explain that number. That is one chance in one with 40,000 zeros after it. Okay? Now, you don't even know 